and welcome to a new video and uh, boy has it just been too long since I've made one of these uh, I think it's been like a month and three weeks like I, that's just ridiculous uh, so without further ado let's get on with it uh, so for this episode of Wii U Weekly kind of bending the rules a bit because these games didn't come out this week and uh, they came out a while ago but I only got a chance to play them recently uh, so the first game we're going to look at is going to be Poncho which is kind of a 2D side scroller where you muck about with perspective and then uh, there's going to be Jotun, uh, the Valhalla edition which came out on the Wii U uh, and it's kind of like a 2D Norse God of War I would describe it as uh, with some beautiful animation uh, so without further ado let's check them out. Poncho is a game that I'm about as divided about as one can be. The game boasts a stunning 8-bit art style, and it employs a pleasing mixture of vibrant pinks, lush greens, and rusty browns in its endeavour to separate itself from its contemporaries. On a purely visual level, it achieves this, though not resoundingly. One area where it clearly does not set itself apart concerns the eponymous Poncho, a cute robot named after the exotic yet innocuous piece of clothing that differentiates him visually from his brethren, sounding oddly familiar. To provide more evidence of the clear inspiration for this game, the gameplay revolves around 2D platforming while jumping between three planes. In other words, it's a platformer that plays with perspective. Similarities between this game and Fez aside, while this concept of playing with planes is nothing new, having been in a number of Renegade Kid games, Poncho still manages to find some new and fresh things to do with the concept. However, it does suffer occasionally from a lack of proper depth perception. The game would have worked far better on a 3DS or another 3D capable system. Man, it's been a while since anyone said that about a game, am I right? One thing that I can't stop thinking about in relation to the game though are the parts which make it up, as most of them are disappointingly unoriginal. Almost as if the game is trying to satirise the copy and paste nature of some of the lower tier 2D indie platformers. I highly doubt this however, as the game story seems to ponder such concepts as fatherhood, destiny and individuality from what I can discern. Please understand though that I have not played through the game in its entirety and therefore cannot really give a conclusive judgement on it. The game certainly doesn't seem like it'll light the world ablaze. Ultimately, Poncho is not toxic, but probably can be skipped. Moving along, we have Jotun Valhalla Edition, which is a beautifully animated game. In fact, the thing that drew me to the game most was its gorgeous art style, which oozes with a beautiful naturalness and liveliness. Minute details such as one of the bosses panting in between its sporadic assaults on the player really adds just an extra dimension of life to this world. Sprites are shaded in in such a naturalistic way that truly shows that the artist understood and thought about how lighting in the various settings would hit and interact with the various inhabitants of this Norse inspired world. The best showcase that I have come across so far is during the boss fight against Jera early in the game. She casts her vast shadow warning the player to vacate the area which it enshrouds. This particular boss fight is also superbly atmospheric, from Jera's haunting eyes to the sound design. The game also uses camera zoom rather effectively to build tension, although it occasionally makes the character which you command a tad small which can occasionally be a problem for tracking oneself on the screen, especially if it's one of a smaller size, likely the reason that the game lacks off-TV play, a notable exclusion to say the least. The game so far displays true artistic talent and attention for detail, so hats off to the visual crew. In terms of gameplay, Jotun is a methodical hack and slash which asks the player to plan out their moves and react correctly to situations. For example, one's dodge animation is long, therefore the player has to choose the direction in which they shall dodge quickly, and typically no amount of twitch-based skill will allow you to correct a mistake made in this area. The game favours mental agility to physical, giving the whole affair a feel reminiscent of the Souls games, while still maintaining an identity of its own. The controls may feel a bit stiff at the beginning, but one acclimates quickly once they settle into the groove of how the game wants them to think. The only criticism I have of the design is the lack of a symbol on the map to indicate player position, as some of the levels are labyrinths. One can work with this, it's simply inconvenient. 
The story is typical Norse mythological affair, you guide a fallen viking to Valhalla, but this game is really more focused on linking awe-inspiring set pieces. Ultimately, Jotun is a technically accomplished spectacle, and it's well worth a try at least, and I really cannot wait to dive back into it. So that ought to do it for this episode of Wii U Weekly. Uh, yeah, I really would recommend Jotun. Uh, Poncho kind of has some cool ideas, but it just doesn't pay off in the end. Uh, so yeah, definitely I think Jotun is the one out of the two that I would recommend most, but Poncho still was kind of enjoyable. Uh, regardless, uh, if you found this video kind of enjoyable, uh, can you please like it, uh, please subscribe if you have not already, and uh, please comment down below any games you want me to review, you know, we weekly, anything I should be looking out for. Uh, so yeah, see ya. Thank you so much for watching, and while you're at it, why not check out some of these other videos?